Hi, this is Fred Meissner for the, from the Fred Report for the Market Technicians Association. Today we are going to discuss technical tools. We are going to discuss moving averages. What is a moving average? First of all, a moving average is primarily a trend following indicator. It's constructed in several ways. The primary ways are simple, weighted, and exponential moving averages. The advantage of moving averages is that they smooth data series, which makes data easier to use. The disadvantage is because of their nature, price action takes place ahead of the moving average. Moving averages will lag price action because of that smoothing effect. You've all seen moving averages on charts. They are very common. We'll give you some ideas on how to use them effectively here. Deconstructing moving averages. There are three basic types, as we said. The simple moving average. The best example of that is a 10-day moving average. You take the average of uh, value of days 1 to 10. Then on day 11, you add day 11 and subtract the previous days uh, 1. Uh, so you essentially have a new series of 10 with the very first number gone and the 11th day added in. That is the basic type of moving average. That was the very first type of moving average ever done uh, back in the 1800s by Charles Dow. A weighted moving average is a way to make the data at the end of the series worth more because it's current data. Some people like weighted moving averages. Some people do not. Um, but a weighted moving average will weight the current data more than older data. And there's a couple of mathematical formulas available for that. The exponentially smooth moving average it actually uses is a mathematical formula and creates essentially a weighted moving average. It was originally developed by John Harland at uh, JPL in the 60s for aerospace uh, use, and these moving averages basically were transferred over to technical market analysis in a service called trade levels. That is probably the most common type of moving average now, especially moving average formulations used in technical indicators. I note for anyone who actually wants to to delve into the actual formulas for these constructions, any introductory book on mathematical formulas or technical analysis will have how these are constructed in there. Okay. The basic bullish way to use a moving average is simply price crosses above the moving average to the upside. Um, and then when price crosses below the moving average, the bull move is over. Another application of moving averages, which is a little more sophisticated, but I think a little more useful, is to use two moving averages. You take a slower moving average, and then your bullish signal results when the fast moving average crosses above the slower moving average. That's signal will then end when the moving average crosses back below the slower moving average. This is called the moving average crossover method. Uh, generally, two are used. Some people use systems with three or even four moving averages. The important thing to remember with all moving average systems, though, is moving averages generally measure trends best and work less well in the trading range, because in a trading range, they're always late. So what you'll find in the trading range is a lot of what you would be calling a scratch trade where you make very little or no money. We show a chart here of the basic 50 period and 200 period moving average and you can see the orange line is the 50 and the black line is the 200 and you can see how with that 50 period moving average above the 200 day moving average all the way through most of that chart you see that the moving average has basically captured the lion's share of that up move. You also can see, and we'll discuss a little bit later, how the moving average is said to go short and basically failed. You had a whipsaw trade, the moving average is then crossed above, and the uptrend resumes. That's a, this is a very typical chart for moving averages. Um, bearish applications of the indicator. The most basic is the converse of the most bullish, actually, which is price crosses the moving average below to the downside. Another application is the dual moving average crossover system, which we mentioned before, except you add a moving average that's slower, and the signal results when the fast moving average crosses below the slower moving average to the downside. This moving average crossover is negative, and once again, I reiterate for those of you who are using moving averages, make sure that you're using your moving averages in a trend rather than a trading range. 
we show the same chart and we show some failures and things. Note how, again, the 50-period moving average is above the 200-period moving average. In this case, it stays. Note how the 50 then moves below the 200, creating a negative signal. Note also how late that was. Price started falling way before the moving average crossed. Price also started rising way before the moving average is crossed on the upside. You can see essentially the right part of this chart, roughly 2010 on the chart, would be an example of a trading range, whereas the previous uh, year, 2009, was a fairly strong uptrend. We show a very strong downtrend in the UNG to complete this per look at moving averages. Notice that the charts have been below on the moving average. The 50 has been below the 200-day moving average for the entire value of the chart. So you could stay short this commodity, natural gas, for that whole time. If you wanted to be a little bit more aggressive and trading-oriented, you could also take crossovers of price and the 50-day moving average Notice how you would cover your shorts, let's say, uh, when the 50, when the price goes above the 50 day moving average and then reshort when the price goes below. This basically allows you still to capture the lion's share of the move, although in this case, just staying short and waiting for the 50 period moving average to cross the 200 would have worked as well. That is basic moving average theory. For more information, please visit us online at www.mta.org. And if you contact the Market Technicians Association and have further questions, I will be glad to assist. This is Fred Meissner for the Market Technicians Association. Have a good day of trading.